Now, I will say this, and we haven't really gotten into this too much, but one of the B stories this season, which I think has been very interesting and I, and I love it, is the back and forth uh, breaking the touchdown, the passing touchdown record between Drew Brees and Tom Brady. Uh, what makes this even, even more perfect is that they both play in the same division. They got to see each other one more time before the season is out. There's a good chance they may see each other a third time uh, in in the playoffs, um, New Orleans just put the pressure back on this on, on the Bucks because they, you know, they pulled out a barn burner with the Bears who who beat up on on Tom Brady and the Bucks uh, a couple of weeks ago on uh, Thursday night. Um, so I'm, I, you know, I can't wait to see how this thing plays out. I'm pretty sure Brady will take the the lead back uh, this week with, with with a couple of touchdowns, uh, you know, against the Giants. But I just think I think it's funny every every week when I watch the the news and I see breaking news, Tom Brady uh, passes Drew Brees on all time passing touchdown list. And then the following week, Drew Brees passes Tom Brady. I think it's hilarious. Um, but you know we have to we have to enjoy it while it's here because we're really looking at two of the greatest quarterbacks to do it with Tom Brady and, 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 and Drew Brees, two legends, two hall of famers, um, you know, two generational talents at the quarterback position. And I'm glad that as, as, as fans of the sport of football, we get to enjoy this right now and watch the, the two, uh, the two older guys in, in the league going back and forth, breaking each other's records every week. It's going to be fun to watch this thing play out. Yeah. And we, we actually get a big treat next week because, because the Sunday night game this week is uh, New Orleans at Tampa. So, like you who said, Tom may the take record? the lead. Huh? Right, who right. Who leaves the game with who the record? Le- who leaves the game? Because Tom may take the record back tomorrow. And then either Tom can expand on the record next week or Drew Brees takes it back. But we're going we're gonna to learn a lot about the Saints over the next few weeks, too. I thought today was a big win. Like you said, they almost let that get away. They had a 10-point lead late, and they allowed the Bears. I don't... I, Listen, I don't know how the Bears continue to be in these close games, man. I'm going to be honest. They have one of the worst offenses I've ever seen in football. And every week, it's it's a nail-biter down to the last minute of the game, no matter who they're playing. It doesn't matter whether they're playing the Giants, the Falcons, the Saints. It's always the same thing with, with the Bears. But in regards to the Saints, we're going to learn a lot about them. I had to pull up their schedule real quick because they got Tampa next week. They got the Saints mm-hmm. after that. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, they got Tampa next week. They got the, the 49ers after that. So that's two big games back to back. They get a little bit of break with the Falcons and Broncos, two teams they should beat. Then they get the Falcons again and they get the Eagles. But then they finish out with the Chiefs, Vikings, and Panthers. Obviously, we know about the Chiefs. I think the Vikings have been better than their record. They won a big game today against Green Bay, and they've been in all their games as well. It's just they've struggled defensively. And again, the Panthers yeah. are one of those teams that I don't think I don't think anybody really looks forward to playing the Panthers because they know it's going to be a close game. Teddy has kept that that team in so many games this year. Um, but we, and they we're get very McCaffrey fortunate. Back soon too. We'll have they'll have McCaffrey back by then. Um, they got Derek Brown at defensive tackle, who was my favorite rookie this year. I think the kid has been absolutely dominant on the defensive line. And yes, he um, has. we we get we get a, a, a true treat next week, man, because this week we had this. We got to sit through the Eagles and Cowboys, but next week we get Brady Breeze Part Two. I'm so looking forward to that game. I really, I can't wait to see who leads that game with the uh, with the record for passing touchdowns. So much going on, and 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 I got I got to commend the Saints defense because they've actually been stepping it up as well. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore was amazing out there today, and uh, and Cameron Cameron Jordan. Uh, you know, th- this was actually a pretty big win for them just because of the, the two games they have coming up next. So you don't want to lose this game. And then you got the Bucks coming up, followed by the 49ers right after that, because there's a chance that it, that could have been a three game skid for you guys. You know what I mean? Um, and again, I think they have they can beat either one of these teams, but it's 50 50. It's not it's not like you said, they, they got the Falcons and the Broncos right after that. This ain't that. This is two of the top teams in the NFL. That they got to play back to back weeks. So this was actually a huge win um, over over a really tough Bears defense because that defense has been dominant. Um, you know, with, with Khalil Mack leading the way, offense is trash. 
And every time I watch them play, I think back to uh, what was that week uh, two. I sat the ball watching the game when they played the Giants and uh, your boy out there. And I'm just like, yo, we're giving him too much fuel right now. <laughs> they they got to be brought back down to earth, man. The Bears have to be brought back down to earth because the offense is, is, is not good. I'm just going to call it straight to straight. The offense is not good at all. Calling it not good is putting it lightly. They coming into today, I believe they were ranked 28th offensively, um, which puts you in a territory of teams like the Jets and the Jaguars. Yeah, uh, they're they're <laughs> they are a bad. yeah, they are a disgusting offense. And shout out to my man O, who's a big Bears fan. It's it's a crime. It's a crime that within the last 20 years, we are on a second edition of a really good Bears defense because in the early 2000s were Erlacher and Lance Briggs. Um and um, Tillman, Charles Tillman, they had Pro Bowl caliber guys and they had a terrible offense. And we're seeing it again, as you mentioned, Khalil Mack, uh, Eddie Jackson in the secondary, Fuller, uh, Akeem Nix. They've got multiple Pro Bowlers on their defense. And that offense every week looks like a peewee football offense that's struggling to just get past the 50 yard line. Like for them to get up across the 50 yard line is an accomplishment if they can at least get in the field goal range. They they feel happy that we were able to at least do that. And it's disgusting. It's terrible football to watch. We shouldn't have to watch it as fans. Why, why should we have to watch that type of offense, you know, in this day and age? Like, they're taking us back to the point where there was no forward passing football. That's how bad they are. You know why we're subject to this? I'm going to tell you why. And you, you, know, you know the reason why it's subject to this, because you had a brain-dead GM that thought it was okay to pass up on, on a guy like Sean Watson. <laughs> <laughs> you could have had that guy. You could have had Mahomes, and you go for Mitchell Trubisky. That's why we have to be subject to this, Eric. That's the yep. reason why we, we have to be subject to this. So they, congratulations to that guy. They they passed on. The they passed on to Sean and Patrick Mahomes because they fought, they felt Mitchell mm-hmm. Trubisky was the future, and traded away the house to get him too. And 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 now look at you. He ain't even playing him. He he's second string right now. No, they actually put him in today for one play to run the ball. They actually put him in and put a design quarterback run. That's how disgusting that offense is. I feel bad because Montgomery, I think, is decent. Um, you know, but it's just it, it's bad out there what's going on in, in the offense of Chicago. But you know, I, I don't I didn't pick them to go to the Super Bowl. I'm not changing my pick on that either way. Um, I don't even think they'll be sniffing at the at the Super Bowl. But uh, you know, I I gotta I gotta say say this, uh, you know. The, the, the gambling, the gamblers have been active this week uh, over the past couple of weeks uh, betting on this uh, presidential election. And um, th- there's actually been more money bet on this presidential election than there was for the Super Bowl, which I thought I thought was crazy. Um, but, I, you know, the only, obviously the only reason we, 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 we told you guys this at home is just to, to stress the importance of you guys getting out there and voting. Um, if you were able to, I believe in New York, the, the early uh, voting is today was, was the last day for it. Um, so, but if you have already, great. And if not, November 3rd, make sure that you guys hit the polls up. I'm going to be out. Um, the polls open at six o'clock. I'm going to head over at about 6.15 in the morning just so I can get it done because I want to beat the rush before everybody just uh, just comes out. Um, but make sure that you guys get out there and vote is very important. Um, I, you know, at this point, Eric, you put that video in the group chat, you know, spoke about what was going on in Minnesota where they, where they, they pulled the Mickey Ficky out there uh, and switched up on the, on the voters with the, with the mailing uh, ballots and, and, and whatnot. So just get out there, go to the polls and vote. Um, again, we are in the midst of a pandemic. COVID is still alive and well. So if you are out, just get your mask and get your gloves because you know on the vote on the on the, the when you go to vote, there's gonna be a lot of people touching those things. So it's gonna be a lot of germs spread back and forth. So have a pair of gloves with you. Have your mask on, and you'll be you sh- you know you'll be fine. Um, you know, but just make sure you vote. That's that's the most important thing. Make sure you vote. Uh, however, you have to do it. I've done mine through a mail in. Um, because I'm in the process of moving, obviously, but, and I, and I've got to be honest too. Um, this is my first time voting. I've never voted before this. Um, I've always been very skeptical of the process, but I also felt like everything that took place this year, uh, put me in a place mentally where I felt like I have to vote. I, I've got to at least exercise that right 
no matter what the outcome is. And and I'm not, uh, I'll never lie to you guys and make it seem like I'm totally confident in the process because we know that the, the process can be very, can, can be very iffy to put it lightly, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it's important that we do it. As you mentioned in Minnesota, you know, a last minute ruling um, that a lot of people weren't even aware of in the state changed it from your mail and ballot has to be received by a certain time and a certain date. Um, a last minute change that took place over the last week, last week, which is completely unfair for those who wanted to just do a mail in ballot, as you said, so that they wouldn't have to be in contact with hundreds of people waiting online or in the, in the balloting uh, uh, locations. So, you know, um, Republicans are doing any and everything to eliminate your vote. It's important that we do vote. It's important that we exercise that right. And, um, and I will say too, man, stay safe, bro. Everybody, but, but my brother stay safe as well because I just, I have a bad feeling about how this whole situation gonna play out, man. You know, oh yeah, that's why I'm, listening. Know, I said I'm, I'm going at six, yeah. six o'clock in the morning. I'm out, I'm gonna go yeah. and get in and get out, bro. I don't want, want to be out there all day. Plus I got to shoot later on in the day anyway. So I can't be out there all day like that. Anyway. I just, so I'm trying to go and yeah, I just, out. I just encourage everyone to be safe, man, because uh, our, our current uh, commander in chief, we know what he's about. And, you know, he, he is provoking and, and trying to stem up a certain atmosphere within the country that I think is, is going to be very bad come next week. Um, if you haven't already to, I put it in the group chat, as you talked about, not only the, the, the voting situation in Minnesota, but a documentary called totally under control, which I think everyone should watch because it speaks to how flawed the current administration has been and the way they handle things. And this documentary specifically focuses on COVID-19 and how early the administration was made aware of what was going on and yet how late they decided to react and put measures in place to help the country. And that, that's, it's very big. It, if, you, if you don't know, if you haven't watched it already, make sure you watch it. It talks about how the previous presidency, obviously Obama, had left them already the playbook as to what to do in a pandemic. And they literally trashed it. They literally said, ah, we're not gonna need that and then had the nerve to try to blame the previous presidency and make it seem as if they never handled H1N1 correctly. They didn't handle uh, Ebola correctly. And none of those other pandemics or, or you know viruses that took place under Obama came even close to the death total that we've seen with COVID-19. So it was a complete mishandling. And this is a man that should not be running a country. If you can't listen to the experts, if you can't follow the script that has already been left for you, to handle a pandemic of this sort, you have no business running the country, point blank period. Yeah, well, the, the problem is, is that he has so much hatred and jealousy of President Obama that you couldn't even take, like you said, that, that playbook and, and run with it. You had to do your own thing. You wanted to get rid of all of that. You, you, you're working so hard to erase everything that President Obama did that you you cost this country hundreds of thousands of, of lives. You know, you put everybody at risk with this virus because you want to distance yourself so much when in reality, you're benefiting so much off of the work that President Obama did. So, you know, just listen, just make sure you guys get out there and, and vote. And um, you know, let's let's make this change count, man. Let's make Absolutely. let's make November third count. That's what we got to do. Right. No, no matter what happens next week, exercise your right. That's a fact. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. 